Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Master Quest. I am your host Midnight Sun and today, today Harvey is going to go to a castle but first we have some unfinished business to attend to. Those of you who played um, Ocarina of Time before know that what we should have done is come out of the Deku Tree and then been stopped by a certain midsection thrusting somebody. So let's go see what he would have been saying had we been blocked by him and been forced to talk. Hey Meadow, what you got? Talk to us. Um, I tried to save the Great Deku Tree, but yes, he died. And, oh, man. T oh, not cool, man. Not cool. Uh, um, just walk through. Um, anyway, yes. So he just slathered some serious, uh, gilt cream cheese all over our life bagel. And, well, we don't really want to deal with that. That's, that's kind of bad. He's going to talk to the other Kokiri. So let's do as Navi is suggesting we do, and, um... Obey the Great Deku Tree's dying command. If you talk to some of the Kokiri around here, yes, some of them do mention the fact that uh, the Great Deku Tree died on your watch. Some of them will also ask you where you're going, what the castle is, and the one dude over here near the tunnel reminds you that uh, if a Kokiri leaves the forest, they die. So let's see what happens when we leave. <laughs> Alright, so Saria came to say goodbye, and she also hands it something off to us, an ocarina. An ocarina which we now take with us into Hyrule Field. Hyrule Field is the big... Oh dear, I see something there I don't like. Well, anyway, Har Hyrule Field is the big um, bunch of nothing that exists all bet between all of the uh, important points of the game. So, let's, uh, let's venture into this place, shall we? But, unfortunately, mm, yeah... Alright, this guy here, I'm going to skip through a lot of what he has to say here. It's just a tutorial on how to use the map, but this owl pops up every once in a while and um, gives us, yeah, a tutorial or he tells us about the area that we're about to go into. I know that he has a name. I just can't remember it right now. I'll look that up and uh, or maybe somebody in the thread can um, can correct me, but anyways, yes, Hyrule Field and how we, how we get to the map is we press start and we tab around a little bit with the shoulder buttons then we get there so he's kind of useful if it's your first time playing but um, a lot of what he tells you is usually kind of common sense or something you would figure out in an instant anyway so we are heading to the castle which we are able to see a bit of over there that's the castle wall I should say and it is located right there in the top center of the map now an average Hylian day is um, it's 12 minutes like uh, a full 24 Hylian hours is 12 minutes, which means that we only get 6 minutes a day and 6 minutes a night. Um, unfortunately, we start off in the middle of the day, so we only have 3 minutes to get to that drawbridge, which um, comes up at night. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, they take the path uh, that I was walking on before, and they would never be able to get to the drawbridge. But, as we're about to see, it is entirely possible to make it there if you take your, um, take your feet off the path. But, I want to do some stuff there during the day, so let's uh, enter during that point. 
But we also don't want to sit through six minutes a night, so here we go. The enemies that I'm fighting right now are stall children. As long as you are not on a uh, on a beaten path, they will pop up at night and they will try and kill you. They are one of three kinds of enemies in the game where if you kill enough of them, like oh, oh, that guy right there, but if you kill enough of them, a gigantic one will appear that uh, drops better loot. So stall children, gways, and leavers are the three kinds of enemies that do that. And we'll be seeing all three of them. And there, oh, there we go. I think that they actually get bigger for the stall children as you go along, because that first one was not so impressive, but that second one was really gigantic. By the way, another thing you can do here before going into town... That's right! If you jump off of each one of these chains, uh, you will be able to get 20 rupees just for jumping. And, uh, come on, Harvey, position yourself. We're not tipsy this time. We don't have an excuse. But yes, um, not if you jump off halfway like um, I just totally did there to show it off. Um, but if you go all the way to the top and then jump, you will get 20 rupees on each one of these things. And it's another one of those infinite rupee spawning point things. So, just like in the rocks in Kokiri Forest, just zone out of Hyrule Field proper, go back out, and you'll be able to do it again. I do believe. But before we head into the town proper, let's, uh, let's take a look in here. Ooh, there are pots in- ooh. Oh dear, we just broke those pots and there's a guard right there. I think we should go apologize. These are not our pots. Um, um, jeez, you're, you're not a very good guard. This piece is what all true warriors strive for, man. Come on. Anyway, this guy doesn't really mind us uh, uh, breaking the jars. In fact, he prefers that we break the jars because he likes there to be more trouble, I guess. He doesn't mind if, um, if people, uh, you know, if, if his captain comes in and says, Hey, man, you were supposed to be manning all these pots. What happened? Why did you let that happen? And he's like, well, this Pfizer is so low. Maybe somebody should redesign it. Also, in here, there's a gold skull tool. Yeah, but most of these pots only have one ruby pieces. Um, every once in a while, you'll get uh, a five. And also, if you need them, hearts will pop out um, just about as often as a five ruby piece will pop out. So, there you go. But now that we're done breaking pots and getting ourselves a gold skull tool, there's a reason I got all those rupees, by the way. Let's enter uh, the market town. Now, if they're more animated or better looking in terms of their graphics, uh, their rendering, whatever, uh, you can you can bet that they have something important to say, like this one right here. Okay, so this guy, this red shirt guy, or magenta shirt guy, whatever, uh, apparently his blue shirted friend over there tried to sneak into the castle and, um, like a complete asshole, got caught and caused, uh, and caused the security to go up. That's great. That's, that's just awesome, man. So, okay, tell me how you did it. You swam through the moat, you're almost there, and they got you. And, okay, a small drain hole. Now, he got stuck in there, but Harvey is a smaller person. So let's, uh, maybe we can find that. First, though, this is the uh, bazaar, the bazaar, the, I don't know how to pronounce it, maybe somebody can correct me. Um, but yes, this is the bazaar, I'm going to call it the bazaar. And in here, you can buy arrows, sticks, bombs, human hearts, nuts, and a Hylian shield for 80 rupees. Now, I kind of only got the 80 rupees just to show that you can get it this early on, because, uh, you know, maybe some people might think that you would have to really, really grind out rupees or something to get to that much. But rupees, like I've said, are absolutely everywhere. I mean, in Kokiri Forest, they were in signs, and here they're on top of, you know, chains. So they're just flipping everywhere, man. Anyway, I'm talking to this little girl here because she also was very nicely rendered, so she must be important. And she also has a name, and her name is highlighted, which means she must be somebody of significance. But her dad went to deliver some milk to the castle, so there must be a very important family in this kingdom. And he has not come back yet. Maybe we can... maybe we can help her out the same way that we need to be... Oh, damn it. Well, you know what that means. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right before he does. This whole conversation is a... Ha ha, your head's upside down. Uh, this whole conversation here is just telling you that, um, you know, time changes in places where it needs to change and doesn't change in places where it doesn't really need to change. Basically. So, like, here, this is a place where it's... Um, time does need to change in order for something to happen, so time will change. But in places like Kokiri Forest, where it's not really that important, or it's not really big enough to justify a lot of time changing as you run through it... By the way, Gold Skull's left. Uh, watch out if you slam into that tree, because it could drop down onto you and cause that uh, full heart of damage that it loves to do. But time passes here because it needs to, and 
by the way. Vine. There are two ways to get um, past that uh, that guard station over there. The one way is to go up the vine. The other way is to talk to this guard over here. But, well, let's see what happens. Yes, we do want to see Princess Zelda. I assume she's the princess that we need to see, consider considering she's the only princess in this kingdom. But this guy's being kind of a dick. So we need to... We need to do something else. Um, now, you can't actually um, get him to open up the gate until you've been thrown out by the guards once. So, once you do that, he'll open up for you. Um, it costs you 10 rupees, and oh yeah, by the way, position yourself properly. Otherwise, you will be hating yourself for a few minutes as you accidentally, you know, climb up a little bit. And you didn't mean to, and then... Blah. What was I saying? Alright, this is a Gossip Stone. Gossip Stones, we can't really... We can't really use them to their full effect right now, but um, we will be able to at some point. Like I said, though, if you get yourself uh, caught by any of the guards and thrown out, they will... Um... Gosh, these guards are horrible. I just walked straight past them. Jeez. No. <laughs> and this is supposed to be their security getting tightened up, by the way. This is the Hyrule Guards tightened security. So, um... <laughs> Gosh, they are horrible. Like... There are all these tropes, you know, about, about, you know, Hyrule Guards being horrible and sissies in some games. Like, in Twilight Princess, they are just complete wusses. Um, but they're also pretty horrible. They just let me walk right past them. I walked right by that guy. They, they need to change those visors. That's what they need to do. In any case, what was I just talking about? I was talking about that guard. Right, once we get thrown out, we can give that guard, um, we can give that guard ten rupees and he'll let us through. He references something um, that I actually don't know, so I can't really remember it. Anyway, there's a guy sleeping over here, and there's that uh, drainage, um, that little drainage hole that we can't really get through. So we, it'd be cool if we could build like a bridge or something higher to jump off of to get there, but this guy's kind of blocking the way. We could, you know, push those crates. But, okay, this guy's from the ranch, so maybe he must... Oh, right! He must be Milan's dad, the one that she said, you know, is missing. He went to the castle. Jeez, he is really horrible. He's been sleeping for a couple of Hylian days, and I know that's only a few minutes, but, uh... Well, I guess that time matters to them. We can't sneak by these guys, though. They are, they are at the very least, a little bit, um... A little bit difficult to get by. You need to be able to climb over something, and we can't really do that. And while I would love to bribe that guard, I really like my money. Plus, you heard the singing, and that means that Milan is in the area. Milan is uh, usually singing at night when you find her, but uh, there's one place we'll find her where she's singing during the day, too. And she comments on how she believes her dad is sleeping, so she's giving us something that might be able to help uh, get him up. It's a very shiny egg. A weird egg. Maybe it's weird because it's so damn shiny. I don't know. But something is going to happen when the egg is hatched, and we are going to need what comes out of that egg when it hatches. I'm not really sure how many of you know what happens when an egg hatches, but let's just say it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. Let's uh, let's actually speed up this whole section here, because you've already seen me uh, walking past the guards. You know, apparently it's supposed to be easier to walk past them during the night, but I just take the same exact path. Um, yep, there we go, chicken hatch from the egg. That's nice, I just slowed it down there to show you guys that. Let's speed it up again. But, uh, yes. So, chicken hatches from the egg. And now we get to go and use this chicken, which crows, apparently, to wake up this guy here. By the way, his name is... He's about to mention his Talon. And Talon is basically modeled off of Mario. It's not exactly hard to look at and, and uh... And say, yeah, I can see that. He has the blue overalls, he has the red shirt, he has the mustache, big nose, big eyebrows. He's Mario. Um, just in the Zelda games. And he apparently is one of those fathers that is absolutely horrified by his children. By his daughter, I should say, specifically. Because, you know, she's really going to let him have it now. So apparently she's the one that has to keep him in line. He's a horribly irresponsible parent. I don't know what happened to the mother. They never mentioned that. I never ask about it either. It must be something horrible, though. Anyways, pushing puzzle. Let's just speed this up, too. 
But yeah, now that he has moved, we can put these crates down in place. There you go. Good job, Harvey. You are... You are one smart little dude. And now we can climb up them and jump across and go through this little place here. Now, as you might expect, um, it's not going to be that easy now that we've gotten in here. And you might think that because I mentioned earlier, you know, that the guards, it's a little bit more difficult for them to see at night. Maybe we would want to come in here during the night. No, you're wrong. Very wrong. Because that little area where we came out, that little pool, yeah, there would actually be a couple of guards there waiting to catch you. And you, you, uh, you wouldn't be able to get past them. You would have to crawl back out, which I think you can do. Anyways, this is just a whole bunch of, um, waiting around, really. It's a, it's a waiting puzzle. They're testing your patience on this one. And I have no clue how, but that guy, who wasn't even facing in my direction, and I was definitely about that far away from a few Hyrule guards not so long ago, he, he saw me. The good thing is that uh, when you get caught in the courtyard there, they don't throw you all the way back out, um, which would take some time and possibly allow night to fall, and then, like I said, there would be a couple guards there. Uh, they just throw you out of that door there and kind of assume that you'll walk away. By the way, walking away also includes getting caught by more guards and getting tossed out more uh, gates. So, not only are they horribly um, inefficient and unreliable, they're also complete assholes. This is going to be a lot of waiting, by the way. So I might as well explain something that I said I was going to explain earlier. Um, that whole thing with uh, how I, I wasn't coming directly out of the Deku Tree. Um, well, I saved and turned off my game, and just like in other Zelda games, uh, like, like a few other ones... Um, and most notably in the original Zelda, which I still have not beaten. I have no clue. Apparently the dungeon that I went to was the second dungeon. That was the only dungeon I could find. Or at least it was the only one I could get into. That does explain why it was so difficult, though. Um, or at least trickier than it should have been. But, uh, if you save and get off, or like I said in the original Zelda, just save, um, it transports you back to a central area. And with Harvey, it is going to be his treehouse. So, anytime that we do that, it gets transported there, and if I begin a video not in his treehouse, if I begin very, very far away from it, then you know that I did some running, so I would be able to get into place. Speaking of running, I'm just going to run in circles here while I wait, because these guards are kind of annoying. They, they have a tendency of just stopping halfway through. Fortunately, this is only the second to last one, and the next one goes pretty fast, so, you know, we won't really have to wait too much longer. But yeah, you'll, you can see that, you know, those guards, they just... Ah, they move so slowly. And by the way, that area back there with all the rupees, you might be tempted to jump down sometimes because even though we only have the very small wallet right now, and actually, it is possible to get a bigger wallet by now, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. It definitely is possible to get a larger wallet by now. Um, but uh, that small wallet, uh, you, you might be tempted to fill it up with the rupees down there because even though there's only a, like um, a few one rupee pieces and one five rupee piece, uh, sometimes there can be a gigantic gigantic amount of rupees down there like 20s everywhere even a 50 i think i've seen um which is a purple rupee by the way uh it goes green is one uh blue is five red is 20 uh purple is 50 uh i think silver is 100 and gold is uh 200 and then there's the prismatic rupee which just fills up your wallet well i think it's 300 rupees it was 300 rupees in majora's mask um but yes, but don't don't go down there because there is a guard that will catch you right away. Fortunately, like I said, that last uh, those last couple guards were pretty easy to get by, so we're in the castle courtyard, which, by the way, in the 3D version looks very different from this. Uh, but before we go in there, let's take a look at these windows. Over in this one here, we have some Mario 64 pictures. We have Peach, we have Mario wearing that uh, wing cap. I wonder if he was doing it with his feet. Um, and then we have uh, Bowser and Luigi. What am I talking about feet? That'd be silly playing Mario 64 with your feet. And Yoshi. And, by the way, you can also hit this window, and if you're short 20 rupees, well, there you go. Red rupee piece. And over here, we got us another window. And even though there's nothing spectacular to look in there, it's a bit more impressive what comes out when you shoot it. So go ahead, Harvey. There you go. A guard, an elite guard by by the way, uh, pops out and throws a blinking ball. Oh, dear, that was a bomb. Okay, so he, he throws a bomb at us. 
Fortunately, he doesn't throw us out. The first time I did that, I actually wondered. I, I got kind of scared because I thought I was going to get tossed out. But we didn't, which means that now we can speak with whoever she is. I wonder who she is. Hmm. Oh dear, exclamation point. Who are we? Well, I am... Your guards are kind of horrible. That's how I got past them. Um, a sword. Be afraid. Oh, you mean my fairy. Do you want it? I can give you a very reasonable price. No, don't go away, Navi, please. And yes, I am from the forest. This is one of the points in the game where it's very obvious that Harvey is talking. To her. And we actually have a choice, uh, but I don't really know. She seems to know a bit too much, and I'm a bit suspicious, so... Oh, but apparently she saw it in a dream, so... Obviously, if somebody sees it in a dream, we should trust them. So, let's let's just go ahead and say yes. Ooh, she's very pleased. Hmm. Well, that that's something, alright. Dude, if you even knew how shiny that stone was, you would flip out. So you're some kind of, I don't know, prophecy, prophecies haven't been too good to me in the past. Not prophets, but a prophecy killed my father. Yes, you did introduce yourself, you're very rude. And you're a princess, you should have known this. Wait a minute, Zelda, that sounds familiar. Legend of something, something of time. Hmm. Yeah, see, she, she obviously heard from us that her name is Harvey. Even though Harvey never talks. Like... He never has any speech things like this. He just says yes or no. He obviously talks. Uh, I don't know. You're being kind of loose-lipped about it. I don't really feel as though I would have too much of a problem uh, also telling other people. By the way, you might, you might notice that I didn't talk, you know, when Saria was talking to us, but I am talking when Zelda does. It's partially just because this one is so freaking long, so... I might as well react. Anyway, we are going to listen to her, her legend, and I'm not going to talk during this, so have fun with your exposition. I'm going to do something else. Okay, so the Temple of Time, which we have not been to yet, is where we can eventually go into the Sacred Realm. Once you get past the Door of Time, all right, which means you can collect three spiritual stones. All right, so we have the Temple of Time, the Door of Time. What what else is there of time that could possibly be in this game? Oh, the Ocarina of Time. Okay, so you have it. All right, good. I was getting kind of worried. I got this this fruity little fairy ocarina. No, actually, I was off doing something else. Um, maybe you could tell me again, please. Um, yes, you're not very good. But you're just going to repeat the same thing over again, so let's skip through that. The Ocarina of Time. Blah. Um, sure, yes, I did. So you're spying through a window at some dark clouds, or at least a person who is symbolic of dark clouds in your dream. Or the dark clouds are symbolic of him, more like, actually. Anyways. Well, I don't know, this guy, this, this guy sounds kind of, uh, doesn't quite sound legit. I don't really know if I want to look at him, but I guess she convinces us to anyway. 
Oh, hey, it's him. It's the bro from my dream. How's it going, dude? Yeah, I guess his eyes are kind of intimidating, but I don't know. He seems like a pretty cool guy. They hail from the west. They're from the west coast? Nice. Well, apparently this guy isn't so cool. He, he is manipulative and deceptive, so maybe he is from the west coast. Ah, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, by the way, um... When he looks at you, if you have a rumble pack or using a GameCube controller with a rumble feature, um, your rumble thing will shake because you're scared. You get startled by his eyes. I don't know. Unfortunately, I'm using a wireless uh, GameCube controller, so I don't feel that. It's actually going to be a little bit annoying not using it because there's some stuff that I want to show off and, uh, well, I might have to use something else. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't really listening to you. Okay, so he's at, he, he headed to the Triforce, and from what we've been able to gather, if a, if a bad person gets to the Triforce, um, then they will, uh, you know, not cause anything good. They'll cause bad things, in fact. Eh, I don't know. You're just a kid. We're just kids. It doesn't really seem all that good to be trusting us with all this. Well, if your prophecies have never been wrong, how come your dad doesn't believe you? Well, I guess she needs some kind of man to uh, believe her, otherwise she might have some gender confusion issues in the future, trying to compensate for that lack of a positive male figure in her life. By the way, that uh, headdress of yours sure is um, chic. Wink! Okay. So he has bad powers, and it's good that we've come. You're kind of repeating what you said before. I'm just gonna chill. Yeah, this, uh, this whole thing, a little bit repetitive, but then again, she's royalty, and government's always kind of repetitive. Yeah, let's, let's get that Triforce. Maybe I can wish for, uh, for some better fairies. Sweet, we got something for our scrapbook. We got the, the princess's autograph. Ain't that, uh, useful, jeez. Also, the princess's autograph replaces our chicken, unfortunately, so we're not going to be waking up any lazy, uh, any lazy ranch owners anytime soon. Ooh, oh, her attendant. All right. Let's go meet, uh, one of my favorite characters in the game, Spiky Tits. Hey, Spiky Tits. Tits are spiky. How's it going? So your Impa, the Shikas, or Shikas, or Shikas, I have no clue how to pronounce that. But she's in charge of protecting Princess Zelda. The Shikas are like a ninja clan that protect the royal family. And she's in charge of babysitting the prophetic brat. She's also in charge of uh, teaching us how to do certain songs on our, well, a song, I should say, on our ocarina. Gosh, it sure is convenient that we got that ocarina so we can prove our connection to the royal family. Convenient. Jeez, just look how spiky. Gosh. Perky as hell. Memorize this song. Yes, this is a very important song. It's also a very cool song. It does some stuff you might not expect a song to do. And we'll be seeing that a little bit later on. This is, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, Zelda's Lullaby, there we go, alright, I missed it, it's off a little bit. But we get, um, Shiny Ocarina sh Syndrome, once again, with Zelda just kind of chilling out in the background there, just kind of staring at us. <laughs> if the castle soldiers find me, that's a good joke, that, that, that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> I didn't know ninjas were such comedians. Uh, whatever, we'll go with you, though. At least we don't have to sneak around through water and dirt and horrifying things. This beautiful and small land of Hyrule. Alright, Spiritual Stone of Fire. That sounds uh, promising. We need that. Okay. Ah. Kakariko. Kak. 
Hmm. So apparently we're not raised in some... Oh, you don't. So apparently we're not raised in some secret ninja village. You were raised in a village everybody can go to. Okay. That, okay. So now that we've learned that song, we have a VIP pass to just about everywhere. If uh, that song is recognized, that is. And, um... Alright. Thanks. Oh, Impa, that's not the way that arms bend. Then again, she is a ninja, and ninjas have learned how to do some crazy stuff. I have a whole book about ninjas. Anyways, uh, time for some wrap-up. So what did we do today? We left Kokiri Forest out of uh, shame and guilt. We nabbed us a music-playing clay-molded ocarina thing for fairies. And we proved just how completely inept the Hyrule Royal Guard is. I think that's uh, I think it's enough work for one day. I will see you all later, I suppose, and uh, and yeah, I don't have anything else to say, so I'm just gonna awkwardly, just gonna awkwardly uh, sign off. Uh, bye. <laughs>